I want to give you guys a special message. This won't be long, but hopefully this just resonates with you. Someone's going to ask, people have asked, what do I need to do to be saved? And then after that, how do I stay saved? But more importantly, I want people to think about just your salvation. Paul says in Romans 3, verse 10, he says, there is none righteous, not one single person who's righteous. There's none who understands. There's none who seeks, meaning there's none who continues to seek on their own. And I'm putting this phrase this way on their own because there have been those who have sought and done so temporarily, but he's using the participle, meaning there's none who is seeking God. All have turned aside. They have all become useless. There is no one who does good. Not me, not you, no one that you've ever known. There is not even one. The reason why I bring this up is because even as believers, even still this resonates with us because there are times where you do things, where you think things, you say things, you act in ways that just seems unbecoming of a believer. The Bible says there's none good. Even those of us that are saved, that have the Lord in us, that have the Holy Spirit, there's nothing good about us, as Paul said. The only good thing about us is the fact that the Holy Spirit dwells in us. Why that is important, why I want you to focus on that is because all the times that you have failed, all the times that you have made mistakes, all the times that you've intentionally stumbled, God still holds you in a regard, not because of yourself, not in high regard because of yourself, but because he loves you. How do I know? Well, the Bible tells us that he caused us to be saved. We didn't do so on our own. He caused us to be saved. First Peter 1, 3, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who caused us to be born again. Now, let me tell you what some good news is. Matter of fact, not just good news, but let me tell you what the great news is. Paul says this in Romans 8, 28, and we know that God causes all things, this word there, that word again, all things to work together for the good of those who love God. So all of us who have been caused to be born again and we love God, He's going to cause all things, good, bad, what have you, to work for our benefit, to work uh, for the good to those who love God. Whatever's happening, it is if you love him, if, he, if you're his and he's yours, it is going to work out for the good. Now, maybe not the way that we would design it to be, but for our, our good, to those who are called according to his purpose. For those he foreknew, he also predestined to become conformed to the image of his son so that he would be the firstborn among many. Now, I want to focus on this right here. Verse 30, and those whom he predestined, he also called. Notice the past tense verbs here. And these whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. These are past tense verbs that are used here. This justification means to be declared right and treated as such. Think about that for a second. As bad as you are, as broken as you are, as often as you mess up, he still says he's going to cause those things to work for the benefit of you, to, for your good. What's that mean? Well, in bringing you close to him because he wants you to be conformed to the image of his son. And he says that in all of that, he has justified you. You have been justified. That is a statement to say that you've been declared right and treated as such. Declared right by who? By Jesus, by the Lord. And then if he has justified you, well, then the Bible says, who can bring a charge against God's elect? Verse 33, who will bring a charge against God's elect? God is the one who justifies. So no one else can say anything counter. No one else can say anything to the contrary. It doesn't matter what anyone says. That is, if indeed you are his. And so if you are his, the Bible is clear. You have been justified. There is now no longer a payment of sin that is required. The debt has been paid. Hebrews 9 tells us that since the debt has been paid, there is no longer a need for a sacrifice, meaning there is no longer a need for you to go and get saved all over again. You are saved once and for all. And so the question is, though, what must I do to be saved? Not what do I need to do to stay safe? Because once you're saved, you are saved. I don't care what anyone says. Let me just give you this. And those that disagree, fine. Let them disagree and work to stay saved. Let them on their own lift a heavy boulder that they can't carry. They are, they are entrusting themselves to carry this burden of staying saved, not sinning too much, not thinking too much about sin to cause themselves to lose their salvation. I'll leave them there. But for the rest of you that want the really good news, the great news, you don't have to carry that burden. The burden is done. However, let's make sure that you are indeed saved. And how does a person become saved? 
Well, the question was asked of Paul in Acts 16, 30, and it says, after he brought them out, he said, sirs, what must I do to be saved? Notice what he says. They said, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. You and your household. So what's required of salvation? Believe. Simply have faith. The Bible calls us believing ones, those that are believing. And it says participle, this continual believing. And how does it stay believing? How does it stay continual? Because he gives us his Holy Spirit. That's why he says, cause all of us who are in Christ, he caused us to be born again. And so with this new heart, we then do seek after him. With this new heart, we then do keep believing. With this new heart, we then do keep following and abiding. And so that's the good news. The reason why I want to tell you this is because when you mess up, when you go off track a little bit, when things happen, or if nothing bad happens, you haven't done anything that requires you to be uh, sorrowful, but you can still glory and be thankful for what he's done, what he has done. Guys, that's the good news. Nothing else you need to hear for the rest of the day that should make your day feel better than what I've just said. Not that I said it, but the Lord said it in his word. And so the good news is not, that, as I say before, the good news is not that salvation has come to the Jews. The good news isn't even that salvation has come to the Jews and Gentiles or to the world. That's not the good news. The good news is that salvation has come to the world permanently to people who did not deserve it. You're not any good. He is good. And he decided to show goodness to you and save you. Think about that.